hell? You look good. Hello. I don't care what anybody says. You look good. I, I'm trying to make any. Of course, this figured out before the whole thing. I don't, I don't, I can't tell you why I'm cutting out. Hold on. Jack, get on. Okay. okay, I'm getting people off the internet because there's so <laughs> off the internet. Just I'm, ground I'm, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm going to send my children, my other children, so that, uh, Yes. Uh, you know, anyway. Otherwise, this is going to be a whole different show. Can you, can you hear me now? I keep on saying, can you hear me now? No? Better. Okay. Um, I... Live TV, folks. I, 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 I'm long. Tell them... Let it figure. Um, I okay. I all right. I'm phone for sig. Ah, oh, I'm going to my phone for so I might drop out. So, folks, here's kind of what happened. <laughs> well, we let Josh kind of figure out his technical issues. So, Friday night, I had a really great idea. And the idea was I wanted to open the show with a Foo Fighter song. And I wanted to be able to um, kind of set the ambiance and the mood. And I was going to play times like these just a sort of like a mood setter, right? Is we were just gonna, you know, kind of test it out and get everybody ready. And it's kind of bumper music and whatnot. And, you know, because I rushed it Friday and I was extremely busy and didn't do any kind of real planning and preparation and setup. Um, I didn't really think through it a whole lot, right? And so I came back and Let's see if Josh is back. I see Josh again. See Josh's handsome face. Okay, so I'm, I'm using my hotspot now. Well, you're act we can actually hear you. Okay. It sees it, I can tell that I have four bars. Yeah. So I was telling everybody a story while you were gone. So what ended up happening was um, I start off the show with this awesome, it was actually a live version of, the, of, of Foo Fighters playing times like these, which is probably my favorite one. Uh, it was them on SNL with Dave Chappelle. Um, and I loved it, and it was great. And we started playing it, and literally my phone starts blowing up. And it was Josh, and it was my wife, and it was like seven other people. Like, either I can't see you, or there's no audio, or blah, 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 whatever. And then suddenly a big thing pops up on my screen saying that the video had been blocked because, I guess, Sony decided that we were violating copyright because of all the money we charge our viewers and the countless amount of money that we make off of the show. And so that's the untold secret of the show, Jacob, you are making money it is. over fist. I wish people had any idea how much money I was making off of doing this. <laughs> um, and so basically it got blocked everywhere, um, pretty much across all social media platforms. And then, um, except for Periscope, apparently they have no rules. Well, yeah, Periscope is basically TikTok. Um, and so uh, so what we decided was, or what I decided, is that I wanted to redo this uh, for a couple of reasons. One was because the quality wasn't great, because we didn't have time to do a lot of setup. Uh, and that's 100% on me, not on the guy, the professional who's here playing with us. Um, and B, because um, not everybody got to see it. And so I really wanted people to get a chance to see the show and uh, get to know Josh a little bit better and experience his music and his talent. And so we decided to try it again. And we're not going to do exactly the same thing we did last time. 
so, which I see the look of shock on Josh's face, who thinks he's going to play all four. No, I'm just messing with it. Uh, so we're not going to do the exact. Did that? No, no, we're not doing the exact same show we did last time. So if you were with us last time, um, enjoy. It's going to be different. Uh, and if you weren't with us last time, then enjoy my friend Josh Gillespie. So everybody, welcome Josh Gillespie. Yay! Applause in the background. Hold on, there we go. Now you can see me. By the way, you, you, I know you're, you're enjoying my hat. I, yeah, I made the comment off camera that uh, you're being a jerk for this show by wearing a Bills hat. <laughs> Listen, man, you know I'm a Colts fan. Um, I, I love the Colts. I'm proud of the Colts, but I am a lifelong Bills fan. And yesterday was our first home playoff win in 25 years like almost since the last time i won a campaign yep <laughs> it's it's that was a good run for them and the colts gave them a good run um yeah. and if they had just own feet uh they could have won it could have been yeah the Bills could have been going on year 26 but uh you're welcome because Frank Reich, as Bills fans are are apt to remember, is an aggressive guy, and so he took aggressive yes. plays, and that ended up ended up backfiring on him. But you know what? That's what I love about him as a coach too. So yep. uh, it didn't bother me that he he took those calls because he's been doing that all season. Um, Correct. What I wish he would do is stop running on fourth and one at the goal line. Uh, yeah. Maybe make do a pass play. That that'd be kind of nice. But because he always runs it, um, but you know, hey, that's that's something you take for next year. Is, does Philip Rivers come back? Don't know. Yes. Um, do they make a play at Aaron Rodgers? Do they make a play at Matt Stafford? Do they draft a QB? Um, I think they get Carson Wentz. Oh no, no, no! I'm with Pat McAfee on this one. Stop that talk. He's a terrible quarterback. He's got a terrible contract. We don't need that in Indianapolis. Um, I'd rather just have Jacoby Ellsbury for another year and, and give Jacob E some time to, to learn the ropes. I mean, that's fair. The locker room loves Jacoby. He's a great presence on the team, on the field. Um, and he's just an all around good guy who I think when he was healthy, uh, after Andrew Luck retired, he actually performed well. Um, but when, then he got hurt and then the Colts went two and seven. So it's going to happen. That's like my campaign record, basically, two and seven. <laughs> Ironically. Yeah, but those you, those two wins are pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, well, you, know, you, you were around for one or two of those seven, so, yeah, you know. So. <laughs> Good times. Good times. All right, my man. So I know one thing that we're going to do, um, and by the way, to all the folks at home, is all the time that Josh and I spent doing a technical setup. We actually didn't walk through the song lineup. So no, we didn't. We, I um, have no idea outside of the one song, my single, you know, we ought to take requests. Um, no, no cause someone's going to say Freebird, and yeah. I'll be honest right now. I don't know how to play Freebird. That's on purpose. I yes. Don't, I don't need, I, you leave that to the professionals like Leonard Skinner to play Freebird. You don't want some. Yeah, but they're all dead. So that's kind of hard. <laughs> Well, the one that matters is. Um, the, rest them, the rest of them, I actually think, are pretty are, are alive. Um, and uh, no, no offense to Skinner. You know, I got love for Skinner. Yes. Um, and uh, so anyway. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, as you get ready to play, and I cut you off. Uh, what I want to do is I want to talk through the single first. Yeah. Um, or at least a brief intro, and then you can play it, and then you can – let's talk about it a little bit. Sure. Well, my first song off of my first album um, – and, and mind you, this whole thing, for for those who know me, uh, may seem a little uh, crazy. For those of who don't know me, well, I'm just a musician. True. Right. Um, so in, in many ways, this song is – a, it, it, I have always referred to it as a call to action. Um, I wrote this song, um, I wrote the tune for it without knowing what it was going to be. And, and we'll get into this later, but uh, the way I write music is that I write song, like 
the tune first. The lyrics always come later. I don't, I don't know what's going to uh, come about with the music. Um, but the way that I played it and the way that I, I, I went about kind of going forward with it was that it seemed more like a um, – like a call to action, like this. This was going to be the statement for the album, and that's a and it was a personal statement for myself. That was, was a personal statement for everything that I was kind of seeing going on in the world, um, and uh, that you know maybe it's time. It's and as I said on Friday in our what I will officially call our run through, um, <laughs> our dress rehearsal, our dress rehearsal <laughs> was that it was a um, there are two versions. Well, hold on. Two versions of this song um and uh just because I, I changed up the lyrics you know i thought i had a set of lyrics and then i realized no i didn't want those and so th these came about so um this is the first song off of an album that is for the most part complete i'm doing a couple changes on one of the song on one other song but it's for the most part it's complete and we'll have a rollout of singles that i'm excited about yes um, but yeah so this one this one is called maybe it's time and I'll play it for your your lovely viewers now. Let's do it. is always burning than when we're on our screens The world is all in chaos We're caught in the between We say we want to change now We don't know what that means is lost. We fall deeper and refuse to count all the cards. Maybe it's time, time for us to see. Open our hearts to the true change we need. Maybe it's now, only we knew how, how to make sense of the Flow of sound, maybe it's time. Well, there you go. I dropped my pick in the middle of the song. <laughs> uh, and normally I have a, a pick standing by, but I have a son standing by. Not every performance is perfect. <laughs> Do I get a reduction on our fee? Yes, you do. Okay, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll talk to my man. I'll have my manager talk to your manager. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Refugee and orphan, better.
All right. Okay. We, okay. we are back. We are. This is. Uh, we sort of are. I'm sorry. I I am with with no internet and. and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel like this is where I'm, I should put the Trump hat on. I'm I'm coming back. I swear to you I am. Hold on. There you go. We're uh, good. I'm I'm So how about those bills yesterday? Anybody else get to watch that game? That was fun. Last couple last second calls. I think we may have Josh back. Maybe. I'm switching between phone and and the house Wi-Fi and everything else. This is this is just maddening. I'm sorry. So let's move on. So so one thing I did want to ask you about is your T-shirt. You're rep since I'm representing the Bills, you're representing Andy. So why don't yes. you tell everybody about your T-shirt? So for those who can't read it, it says Naptown. Um, Naptown is the sort of an, an affectionate nickname for Indianapolis. It's become affectionate. It used to be kind of derisive back in the day, um, and it, it was it was because Indianapolis was known as India No Place. I think that's how they sort of referred to it. Um, and it was just kind of a sleepy town, you know, way into the into the seventies. Um, I mean, the kind of sleepy town where you had people routinely come downtown to shoot guns in the air to get rid of the birds uh, on Monument Circle. Um, I, I think they actually do this; they still do that, but they don't have guns. They actually have the sound that they that they they ping every once in a while. Uh, I think you can still see signs around town for that. If you're wondering, what the heck is that sound? Well, they're just trying to get rid of the birds. Um, Otherwise, it'd be a whole lot of dead homeless people. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, ee, not going there. Anyway, <laughs> um, but Indianapolis and the residents of Indianapolis really kind of came to embrace the the, the term nap town. Um, and it's it's used in a lot of, of things around town. And this this shirt, if you like it, can be found at the website United State of Indiana. Um, and I like their stuff. I like this shirt, so that's why I got it. And it's it's one of my favorites. And again, so tell I don't everybody for all the connection connection issues. So tell everybody where tell everybody where you're from. What's your background? Well, I'm from Indianapolis, uh, born and raised in Indiana. I am a uh, if you've read last week's Monticello, uh, you'll know that. And I'm who a, hasn't? Right. Seriously. Subscribe I mean, come today on. if you have it already. Hi, mom. Um, hey, also, hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> uh, and dad, because both of them are watching. And I know he probably responded one, to the TV when I didn't say him to. Awesome. Um, uh, anyway, so, yeah, um, I'm a uh, Hoosier by birth, Boilermaker by the grace of God. I went to Purdue University, home of Purdue Pete and America's president, Mitch Daniels, uh, who just happens yes. to be president of Purdue University. Um and uh i actually have a very political background uh, that's how we we got to know each other and a lot of that background has weaved its way into uh this album so that's uh so i couldn't but it's leave. not a political album though it's so not, let's clarify no 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 it's not yeah. not only is it not a political album i'm a i'm also um i hate using the term religious i also 
now hate the term evangelical, but I am a Christian. Um, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and my faith comes out in this album, but I would never go so far as to say that this is a Christian album. Yes. Um, and so you see elements, basically, you see elements in this album of who I am, but it's not just my story. To me, this album and the song, Maybe It's Time, which if I was cutting out the whole time or you missed the whole pick drop, uh, you can catch the studio version of it uh, on Spotify. Give me a follow. Uh, also on Apple Music. It, there you go. Spotify, iTunes, Bandcamp. We are a professional operation around here. You are a professional <laughs> operation. Heck, you can even listen to it right here on YouTube uh, if you happen to be watching it on YouTube. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, it, it, to me, the, the album is uh, a story of resilience. And maybe it's time is kind of a, a, a summary of things that that – we see maybe we've seen in the past year and mind you a lot of these songs actually most of these songs the lyrics at least were written during the pandemic and the social unrest that we've seen in this past year um but the the ideas for these songs came long before that um it's just interesting to see how the, the how the the album itself morphed over the course of going into the studio for the first time in late august of 2019 that was the first time i was just starting to lay down tracks i had about went into the studio with about 20 tracks and you know just started putting things down without lyrics i wanted to see where they would go and the music kind of guides me where things go and i continued to write other songs even after i put down those tracks and um to me again the the, the thing the, the the things that came to mind were just the things that were important to me, what I was seeing in term, in the United States socially, what I was seeing in the world socially, what I was seeing in the world happening um, with my faith, um, things that I were seeing happening within the church here in America, and things that I didn't like seeing. Um, and what do artists do when they see things that they don't like? They incorporate it into whatever they're an artist of, whether that's mm -hmm. painting or whether that's music. And my, my avenue of artistry is music. And, but again, I don't think that you can listen to these songs and that's what's going to stick out to you. I think that the, the way that I went about these songs is, is that I didn't want to write explicitly a song about racial unrest or um, the, the, the way that I saw the politicalization of my faith. Um, and, and when I say my faith, I mean Christianity writ large, um, the way that I saw other things. And, but those elements are definitely in the album, but I wanted to write this from the perspective of whoever listens to this, they come up with their own story. But what I hope they get out of it at the end, if you listen to the story from beginning to end, because to me, it, that's what it is, is it tells a story. It's a story of resilience. And you're gonna, pl you're gonna deal with the struggle in some of these songs. You're gonna deal with things that you don't wanna hear about, but at the end of the day, you know that you can as the name of the last song is, you can sing for joy, um, knowing that a, a change is coming. So, by the way, one thing that we did accomplish from Friday evening is I can't get "Sing for Joy" out of my head. So, <laughs> just so you know, you may have to play that again, just because I'm happy to. I'm happy I can't to. get that out of my head. It's 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 a fun tune. That's also one of my kids' favorite uh, songs. Um, and 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 that song itself. Um, was I knew that was going to be the closer before it even had lyrics. I knew that was going to be the closing song um, and that it would be uh, it, it even before it had lyrics. I, I will I will sometimes give my songs titles for the emotion that I'm feeling mm -hmm. for the song. And that one, I always had the word triumph. That was I don't I don't know why, but to me, the song felt triumphal and it was the conclusion of everything that you heard. Um, and, and so that's, that's, that's how I knew it was going to be. Um, but Hey, if you can't get it out of your head, why don't I just go ahead and sing that for you? Let's do it. We'll do that. We'll do the bookends here. We'll start off with maybe it's time, which is the lead track off of the new album, which the new album, by the way, uh, will be coming out later this year. Um, it is called, uh, make something happen here. That is, and yes. Oh. Thank you, Jacob, for putting that up, because that reminds me, if you sign up at my website today, 
If you sign up for the mailing list, you will get a free download of Maybe It's Time. Hey. It's like a $17 value. <laughs> In some countries, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this, yeah, like I said, this song is, this is the closing song on the album. But you know what? I'll play it second. You don't play songs in order, except, you know, if you're doing a 25th anniversary tour, then you play right. in order. One of the best shows I've seen, honestly. H Hand to God. Last couple of years, uh, real quick, was I saw Third Eye Blind. Yes. And I honestly, I know they're a decent band, but I don't own anything beyond their first album. Their first album was epic, and I knew that it was going to be so incredibly hard to top. But that first album was so amazing that when they came to town, they were on, they were touring like the 20th anniversary of that album. They played it from beginning to end. I was like, that's all I ever wanted from you. And it was amazing. So this is a funny side note. So um, are you familiar? You're familiar with Mark Cohen, right? Walking in Memphis and all that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen him. We've seen him in concert a couple of times. And every time he plays cuts off of that album, he always refers to it as his greatest hits album, even though it was his first one. <laughs> well, I hope that's not the case with Make Something Happen Here. But, you know, I, I think it, it's got some good songs. So let's do it. This one's called Sing for the Day. My eyes again have seen and stand with those between madness and the dream for change to rise anew the halls of power fear for justice to draw near the silent have been heard will the system be torn down sing for the day when all will be made clear and light shines on our padded view sing for the day You may get banned for uh, commercial images okay. too. And here I am. I am not without my glass of Elijah Craig. So. Out of boy. No, I'm not. I'm without it. Oh, oh, oh. Out of boy. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> I, I actually don't have anything to wet my palate. So if my voice gets a little dry towards the end. Well, I did notice you have an audience behind your left shoulder. So maybe somebody can bring you a beverage. 
<laughs> was he uh, hanging out just a little bit? Yeah, I got, I got, I got kids. There's nothing. How many? How many? Tell people how many kids you got. They like to see daddy perform. I got five of them. Five, see, four girls and one one boy, and my son, who was the one. I don't think. I don't know if any. Maybe they saw him. But my son is the one. He's my videographer for tonight. So he'll outstanding the pictures and, and whatnot so that I can actually do something on social. I don't have a social media manager outside of myself. So uh, I need someone to take pictures. Oh, he's also my roadie. He brought me a glass of water. So you need a professional staff like we have here at Monticello Live. Right? <laughs> that, that would make a huge difference. The, the utmost professional staff yeah. looking at, at Monticello Live. We only have the best people. Yeah, oh, only the best. <laughs> I don't know anybody who does anything better at live streaming than the team at Monticello TV. Clearly. Um. We are the Trump campaign of live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a way to get yourself banned. Uh, <laughs> By the way, did you see that amazing tweet? What was it? The John Barron account that was like, hey, folks, I'm new here. I don't know, like a couple of days. <laughs> that was amazing. With the mustache. That was, that was amazing. amazing. That was... It was, may have been the greatest tweet of all time. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I should say for that last song, people may wonder, like, why was Jacob singing it all the time? It wasn't just because I was playing it on Friday night, although that clearly had something to do with it. He has the whole album. Yes. He's he's one of the few people who actually has the whole album, so he's he's heard these songs. So I may ask what his actually. Favorite I've song heard is. like three versions of all these songs. Uh, yeah, you've you've heard the progress of some of them. Yes. Um, I think you heard "Souvenirs of War" without strings. I did. And so, I, what was your? Great. I, I could be ruining this for people, but you know, yes. it's part of the process. Um, no what, more so than losing internet connection in the middle of the first song. I mean. <laughs> If need be, I can always play it again. Uh, <laughs> and maybe I won't drop my pick. Um, but uh, uh, I, was, I had something for this. You're going to ask me what was what? Oh, yeah. What, what what did you think? I mean, like when you heard Souvenirs of War, because I know you like the song. And then you heard it without strings, and then you heard it with strings. What was your reaction when you heard the new version? I was surprised that I liked it with strings, to be honest with you, because my original, the original thing I liked was the guitar harmony and sort of the grunge, grungy-ish mm -hmm. bass hook to it. And it kind of gave it a little bit of a raw sound to it, but then the strings really, like on the high end, just really, you know... <laughs> It, it was it's it's low key one of my probably my, my favorite song on the album because I also really love Wake Up Dead Man. Yes. Um, and and mind you, your your listeners are getting a treat tonight. Your viewers, excuse me, your viewers and listeners are getting a treat tonight because I play these songs. Um, it's it's an electric and an acoustic album. <laughs> Maybe it's time is an electric song. Um, although it was mixed with acoustic guitar, but you can't hear it. Yeah. Um, and I, that's that was my call, um, but especially the first, I, I would say the first half of the album, except for the fifth track, India Blue, um, they're they're all heavy, not heavier tunes, but they're electric tunes. Sure. And um, the the second half of the album is a little bit more acoustic, though it definitely has some electric in it. So, but but I'm giving you guys an elect, an acoustic performance tonight, mostly because we couldn't get the electric to work without the screen cutting out which which still wasn't any better than you know losing internet two-thirds of the way to the first song <laughs> i can't control that <laughs> jeez come to find out it may have been better with the electric guitar <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me what you've heard this album um what song what song do you want to hear well so <clears throat> and then i can give you a little bit of story behind it and again I, I don't want to give too much because when these songs do come out i want the listeners to enjoy them from the perspective of you know i, I don't want what i'm telling them to bias even though i i wrote the song now let's do let's do wake up dead man and i which i know is going to be different acoustically um but i like the lyrics and the message of that song this is a, this is a song that also has two versions, mm -hmm. um, and 
and I'm, I'm actually really happy with this song, the way, the way it turned out, but um, the reason it, just to kind of give a little bit of background on this, is that the reason it took me this long to do an album, uh, because I've been toying with this idea for years. Uh, two of the songs on this album are at least 16 years old, 16, 17 years old. And uh, so when I started writing some of these songs, um, I was I was still very I, w I was too literal, you know. Like when you write music, they say show don't tell. Then I was doing a lot of telling. I've been accused of being literal once or twice. Yeah, <laughs> I, really? I, I wouldn't have ever thought that. <laughs> Um, and so my wife, she's wonderful. She's helped me a lot on this album. She's been very supportive of it. I've always run my lyrics by her, uh, just to get her perspective because she's a writer as well. And, um, so she helped write, rewrite some of my lyrics for me. And she took some of the imagery that I was going for and, and adapted it. Um, and I loved what the final product became. You know, I had to work with it a bit but I loved what the final product became. And it definitely sounds different acoustic, but so we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, this song is called, uh, yeah, Wake Up Dead Man. Not to be confused with U2's Wake Up Dead Man. That's right. Off, off their 1995 album, Pop, which is very underrated in my opinion. Although. But you have a, you'll have a hard time telling the difference. That's right. There's, there's, <laughs> there will be no confusion. <laughs> To the ground and a scorching wind, the barest trickle of light within. It's all you see when you move your eyes. Wake up, dead man, in the valley full of fear. Wake up, dead man. Dark so long and thrown, a brutal silence long betrayed, an endless valley full of bones. Wake up, dead man, in your valley full of bones. Wake up, dead man, your long time struggle.
A little different, thank you. A little different than the, the album version. But truth be told, I was able to get those higher notes at the end better this time. I liked but, it. Uh, here's, here's the thing about that song that that really kind of it was the magic of, of writing that song was that so my brother is featured as the drummer on this album my brother has been a drummer gosh since <laughs> from, from for as long as i can remember my brother is 10 years older than me so i remember growing up with him in the garage playing drums listening to rush and trying to mimic neil pert um and so to have him play on this album was just amazing to me um and i did not have words for this song until i got even inspiration for this song i had something in mind but i wasn't i wasn't comfortable with it but when i got his drum parts <clears throat> added to the to the tune it was like and then I started singing Wake Up Dead Man to the chorus because that's what it felt like. So I was like, okay, so I have Wake Up Dead Man. Where am I going to go with this? What am I thinking of when I think of the term Wake Up Dead Man? That's not, you know, U2's Wake Up Dead Man, which again, completely different song. So there's going to be no confusion there. Yeah, we couldn't afford them, so we got you instead. <laughs> Well, that huge Monticello budget, you know. Yeah, we blew our budget last week on you, so we, you know. <laughs> couldn't get you two this week. Sorry. <laughs> we, could, we couldn't swing you two. <laughs> no, so that that song, here's one. That's a song that if I ever get to play these songs with a full band, that's one that I just feel like will rock the place yeah. off. Yeah. You know? Or as David Letterman would say, It'll blow the roof off the dump. That's right. Um, and that, that's one of those songs. I mean, acoustic. Unless you're playing it in your house, then, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, 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 I'll turn on the album and I'll just play along with it. And it'll <laughs> uh, I know. So that's, that's actually a really fun song, song to play. And it was a joy to put together. There was a, I had inspiration musical inspiration for it but it was when we got into the studio and my cousin uh yes this album is a family affair and you'll think oh family affairs you know what who do you think you are the jackson five well my family may not be the jackson five but we got some crazy talent and my cousin is amazing he's been a producer for 35 years um and he's he's produced some pretty big name talent and who who have won gone on to win some big awards and he has his own project called dream rodeo which covers music of the world and he puts his spin on it but his name is john gillespie and when we were in the studio working on this song you know he would come in with these synths that that i think that you hear they're uh in the version that you have and and it that brought something to the song that i was not expecting when he put that in there i was like whoa you know, and I, I loved that part of the process of working with him because it really was just kind of like I came in there, I came in with the songs, I came in with the lyrics, and I came with some general ideas. And the way that I approached it, in, in all honesty, it was kind of like a Jackson Pollock painting. I just threw things at the wall and saw what stuck. And, um, and but he would come in with some ideas and suggestions too, and it was just, and he, it would be at the right time, always at the right time, and with with the with the proper suggestion and. It was an absolute joy to work with him and kind of keep this process in, in the family. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't other instrumentalists on this song. Um, Tim Beeler plays lead guitar on this album. Uh, he plays lead guitar track on Maybe It's Time. Uh, Joni Fuller, um, you can, she's actually based in England. So this album was recorded in Nashville and in England and in Fort Wayne, Indiana um you know the, covering all the cool spots that's i had to right you know um look when the record company gives you that kind of a budget you gotta you know you gotta do what you gotta do take advantage and, of it yeah and Joni, she does she doesn't just do cello okay so when you hear the strings on india blue and on on slate and on uh souvenirs of war um that is her it's just she's doing everything she does all the strings and there are like seven eight parts mm -hmm. and the first time 
so she does strings on India Blue, uh, which is an instrumental. And um, the first time I got the strings back for that, I literally started started tearing up because that's one of the oldest tracks on this album. It is it is 16 years old. I I remember when I was working on that. Um, and the same thing happened with Souvenirs of War, just because you you hear one thing and then you hear someone's own thoughts come in to be a part of yours, and it just it hits exactly what you thought you knew, even what you didn't know what you wanted. And that's and Joni was amazing. Joni and Tim were were some of the greatest people to to be a part of this project, and I was so happy to be able to work with them. Um, and and Joni's work may not be done. Um, she may appear on one other song by the time it's all said and done. So, anyway. So, at what point did you just decide, screw it, I'm going to make a record? Like, like what, what was that process like? Um, it was basically when I had about 16 to 20 tracks. You know, it's like I had enough that, to me, could fill a whole album. I, I hadn't had that much. I went through... 2019 late 2018 and and 2019 it was just like stuff was coming to me and i was you know putting it down i was you know making notes in my little uh ipod uh, ipod my iphone uh uh music app and um i was you know things were just were just coming in i was like this this could work and i would play it for a couple people and like yeah okay i can see something there like you know i, I remember playing sing of the day for some uh, sing for the day for someone and i was like and i asked him i was like i kind of hear kind of a mumford and sons thing kind of here he's like yeah i could kind of hear that and i was like that's too bad because i don't want that um, <laughs> <laughs> no offense to mumford but you know that's that's not the, the the vibe i was going for but it was clearly there so you know it's like how do you how do you make that into not that in the it's like when people say to me well you've got a really good political newsletter it's like <laughs> do you not read the whole way through yeah uh, i mean yes yeah, yeah so um so yeah it, it, the, the the process was it's like i finally had the music so let's like let's see what can happen here and it it's it is honestly an amazing feeling to be in the studio from beginning to end and when you at the beginning you remember what that first track sounded like and i still have in my archives what those first tracks sounded like and and what i probably should do just to continue to blow my mind but i remember sitting in the studio as we're getting close to finish here and you know we're doing some of the final mixes and i just sit back and i'm like i can't believe my songs sound like this mm. you know i i can't believe that one they sound amazing and I didn't want to say that from a selfish perspective because honestly, I'm it, it. I don't take compliments well. I just don't. And so, to to hear other people say that they like what they've heard, you know, it, it, it is it means a lot to me. Um, but to sit there in the studio at that moment and hear something and just be like, I can't believe something I did sounds like this and i mean that's just that that shows the work that i mean one that i grew as a musician during this process but i mean it goes a lot to the work that my cousin put into this and producing it and a lot of the work that tim went in and putting some of the lead lines down um and again the work that joni did on on strings like souvenirs of war i i listen to that song a lot i do love it i absolutely love it. and and it's it's the strings that keep bringing me back um and I remember playing this song for the first time once I had it finally written for, for Catherine, who's my wife. And she's like, that sounds great. I mean, it's like the, the, the she's like, the lyrics are good. Um, I may have changed them once or twice along the way, but nothing too major. Um, and it is, it is, it's become one of my favorite songs and it's, it's a, it will be a single. I definitely know that I will be releasing that one as a single. I'll be releasing wake up dead man as a single um and i i mean if if i if i follow the strategy right from some of these people that i that i read and and watch the whole album will be released <laughs> as as a bunch of singles but that that probably won't be the case but it is 
it has given me impetus to get back into the studio and to be really and I'm really excited about getting back into the studio to start working on the next album um, because you can hear my influences in, on this album um, because it is a first album so if, if someone listens to this album they'll hear well, I don't want to say who they'll hear. They'll hear it on their own, if, especially if they're familiar with the bands that, that have influenced me over time. And I appreciate what people say that they, oh, I hear this, I hear that. Um, but I'm really hoping that they also hear me. And I hope that the second album sounds nothing like the first. Yes. You know, and, and I want to keep people guessing. And that's one of, my, one of the things that I am proud of about this album is that the first song, to the last song, no track sounds the same. And not a lot of artists these days can say that. And it, it, it's not that I went over, I bent over backwards to try to make songs sound different. It's just that that's, that was the process. That was the writing process. And I was grateful that's how it turned out. Um, but it makes me interested to see what the second album is gonna sound like. And I'm already working on a couple of songs, uh, a couple of leftovers from the first session. Uh, for this album and then uh, I already have some new tracks that I'm working on that that will definitely turn some heads so so speaking of um, speaking of turning heads I kind of feel like the third song should be Slave to the Party <laughs> oh golly acoustic I know I debated it but okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try something that I haven't done I mean I've done in in sort of just to see what it would sound like but i haven't like harvested this out publicly but you can you can pick something else if you want no 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 you asked for this one this one also came actually fairly quickly this is a very organic song i kind of thought so and um so the story behind this song is that i wanted i was i would i had this this feeling inside of me that i needed to get out um that I, it needed to make a statement and the people who make a statement doing that, that just need to kind of like, just like scream out their hearts are punk bands. Yeah. And so I, this, th I wanted to make this to be my punk song. Um, it, it has some punk elements to it. I think it's, it didn't end up being what I would, you know, it's not something that you would hear on a clash album or a sex pistols album. Um, there's also no profanity on it. There is no profanity on this album. No. Um, or, or Ramon's album, but it, you know, but to me, the, the spirit and attitude of punk is in this song. So that's what I was going for. Well, uh, acoustically, not so much, but electrically it does. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Got past the road, I dive right in. Got to decide, I hope to fit in. I play by the rules, and I'll get what I want. Except to the cheek. I <laughs> sorry, kids. <laughs> you know, I, I messed it up. Because I, I did it, I did it, I knew as soon as I started, I was like, that's what that's not the way I was playing it before. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm try this again. I got past the road, but dive right in. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one, Jacob. <laughs> I, knew it needs to be I was afraid of asking you. I know I was it needs afraid. Needs to be done on electric. It's a, it's a oh, bomb sorry. It needs to be done on electric. And it's and what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on this actually. Okay. I'm, I'm going to take this as as a challenge, and so I'm going to come up with, and I, I say this to all all the people who are watching now and who will be watching later. I'm going to come up with an acoustic version of this. I'm going to post it to YouTube, and I'm going to dedicate it to you. And we'll we'll see how this goes. Uh, I will. It, it the the acoustic version will come out before the the or before the electric version. So we'll see. 
Anyway, so the point of the song, because <laughs> I know. Why don't, you, why don't you talk through some of the lyrics? I'll talk through some of the lyrics. So the point of the song is that I I try to use um because as you as you might expect of all the songs on the album this is the one that i connected with the most personally so yes so the the point of this song is that you know i I was wanting to play off of words but also be very literal and so if you know jacob's background then you kind of had kind of have an, an insight into my background and so if you take that into consideration then you know what party means to, to that it that, should be noted that josh was way better at his job than i was so i never ran campaigns i just participated in them it's because you're smarter than me <laughs> uh so basically it, it's it the, the song is is about um it, it takes on the imagery of being of going to a party of literally going to a party like a club you know going on a night out and it's it's like a rave in there it's a party it's a blast you know you, you get past that rope you dive right in um, but the more you le- listen to the lyrics, the more you, you read them and hear the song, you realize that, wait a minute, this isn't just like a dance party. This is, what are, what are, what are you talking about here? And, you know, the, the, the chorus is slave to the party. I need the noise given to fear. I've got no choice slave to the party. I want all the likes. I don't know if anybody notices that. I, I, I throw, that's my social media preference. Uh, I want all the likes. Lost in the darkness. I can't see no light. Well, I mean, okay, I'll come right out and say it. This song is about politics. <laughs> I didn't want to. I feel like we kind of gave that away. Yeah, okay. So this song is about politics. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is essentially, if, if, if there's an autobiographical song on this album, this is it. You know, yes. this, is, this is my divorce song from politics. This is my, I'm done with you, see you, thank you, goodbye. Um, or thank you, next, if we're going to go off of some of the pop references. Um, and, I mean, most, most you know, bands like The Clash and, and The Sex Pistols, they were political. So, yeah, this is, if, if it has those kind of roots, then, yeah, you see that. Um, but I still tried to to weave in imagery of being at a party, being at something, being so involved in something, being so lost in something that you just can't see your way out. There's absolutely no way you can see your way out. Um, and until you realize it, you have to come to a low point. And that's, that's at the bridge, you know, there's a line, it has a way of measuring your price. What's your price? And if you're willing to pay that price, then you're willing to stay stuck in that. If you're not, then it's time to get out. And that's where the, the, the song itself takes a turn. And then you become free from the party. You're free from the noise. And that's how I felt when I realized not only was I done with politics, but I was, I was done with the Republican party. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I politically I'm an independent. I don't, I don't, you know, I had a split ballot in, in 2020, but I guarantee you, uh, no Trump supporter got my vote. Correct. Um, So, uh, but again, it was, it was kind of, it felt freeing. Um, and that's, that's to me, that's what that, this, that song entails is, you know, I'm no longer a slave to the party, but so many people out still are they are a slave to the party or they're a slave to a cult personality. Um, but you know, it's like, no, I'm not going to be one, but let's have, let's have a jam singing about it. So that's, that was slave to the party. I'm sorry. I flubbed that one up for you. And part of me still wants to try to power through this, but it's a matter of getting the vocals and I wasn't getting my vocals right. I was starting to sing the original vocals. Which was when I when I laid the demo for this song, I was totally going for that pump vibe. It was like, yeah. I was like, my I sent it to my cousin. My cousin was like, "Don't do that. <laughs> can, can you come up with something better than that? Just don't do that." That's what cousins are for. It's, <laughs> it was much nicer, but it was very much like, yeah, that, that sounded awful, and. And I kind of felt bad because that was the version that I actually had to send down to my brother down in Tennessee when he recorded the drum track. 
and the guy in the studio that's the that's the vocal line that he heard he didn't hear the the recorded the newly recorded vocal line that you hear and so it's slightly embarrassing that there has been one other set of ears that has heard my other version or the, at least the, the initial time i laid the like the initial track i laid down because yeah it's bad so just think in 20 years is going to be an underground version of slave to the party that's going to be like a collector's <laughs> item bouncing around on the internet if we're lucky if we're lucky oh well golly well is there any any other one that you that you want to hear um we've been going going quite a while i'm i'm still going strong but you know we don't have to go through all the songs but we'll go through as many as you want now let's do i there's one more in particular um and this one is kind of interesting because i know just from hearing it and as well as talking to you about it that it's not necessarily autobiographical but i think uh -huh. seasons is actually my that's kind of been on my list of okay uh, i think there's a lot of meaning to it um, i connect to a lot of the lyrics i think pretty much all of us can at some point yeah this this was the this was one of the final songs to be written um it was actually written after the drum tracks had already been done so it was a matter of like how do i go about the song without having to get my brother back in the studio you know so um I, this this again yeah the song isn't necessarily personal but it feels personal yes um it is a song that is that is definitely my most pandemic -y songs you know just from a, an emotional point of view so um i actually haven't played this one in a while so we'll see how i do on this one but this one should be a lot easier because i actually recorded it acoustically uh it should be easier than slave <laughs> Been up since two, feels a year has passed My thoughts confused and my soul's crashed But I, I need you The waiting aches, my heart it screams There's no escape, I yearn for what breathes where are you? These seasons of my soul This is what happens when I haven't played this song. I'm going to start from the very beginning, though. Been up since two, feels a year has passed. My thoughts confused and my soul's crashed, but I, I need you. The waiting aches, my heart, it screams. There's no escape, I yearn for what redeems. And where are you? These seasons of my soul. Caffeinated and with some breath Just sitting here and wishing that you're there But where are you? The peace of 
pieces fall, my hands can feel to pick them up as yet to be revealed. And I need you. These seasons of my Feed off my anxious thoughts. My heart's been drawn in lots. Oh God, hear my pleas. Who will hear my prayers? I languish here and seek some grace. Steadfast love could heal me in this place. Oh, how long? My bones feel weak. I need you to speak to the seasons of. Thank you. After rough start again. Man. We should have stuck with Friday night show. <laughs> Listen, I figured for what we paid for this, the getting a two for one special was a good deal. That's that's right. You know what? It's, if I'd had my whiskey with me, I probably would have been fine. See, I was just gonna say we 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 went without the whiskey and look what happened. Right? Yeah completely shot anyway <laughs> i got through it it's, i realized what happened is i forgot a chord yes and you're like oh i'm not finding that chord it's not where i thought it was well let's just start over because i remember where it was then anyway so as we kind of wrap up here um what i'm like what are you hoping that this album is going to do both for you and also for the listener you know, I more importantly for the listener, I hope it takes them on a journey. I hope that in many cases they feel that these songs, that they can connect it with them in some ways. I mean, it's kind of uh, an odd album in that it has two instrumentals on it uh, out of 11 tracks. And um, both of those tracks... You know they meant a lot especially because the longer one india blue again that's that's one of the longest ones on there but i think that even the instrumentals uh pinocia especially that that song to me is an instrumental summary of the entire album with sing for the day being the conclusion i mean pinocia it was if you know to me that song it the, the things that you hear in it to me, that's what sounds like, um, to use a biblical term, birth pangs. Um, there's groaning in it. that First time that word has ever been used on the show. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember what the where it's actually used, but I mean, it's basically, you hear the, 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 it elicit these groans because there are songs on here that they deal with some heavy topics. And Seasons precedes Pinocha, and Seasons... Um, as you can tell, it deals with heavy things. The heart is heavy in that song. And so it leads right into Seasons, and or, or it leads right into Pinocha. And you may be wondering what the heck Pinocha is. Um, Pinocha. It's a little wooden puppet. They made a, a Disney video, a Disney movie about it. You're right. That's one. It was actually, this is where I'm going to get all super nerdy on you, actually. Uh, so, so when you think of 
the the supercontinents when the earth was for you know over the earth's evolution you know what are the supercontinents that you might think of or you may only think of one but what is one that you might think of yeah okay sorry it's pangea sorry wait, wait. <laughs> Jerk. anyway so one of the but so to name the song pangea seemed too obvious and the other ones seemed either a little too weird or whatever Pinocha just kind of stuck out because to me it seemed unique but Pinocha apparently was one of the seven if you follow that line of thinking Pinocha was one of the seven supercontinents seven or eight supercontinents um all I can say yeah is that if your mom and dad are watching right now they're asleep they got their money's worth for your Purdue education <laughs> so okay so what happened you know when, the, when these things break Purdue apart, University ladies and gentlemen yeah, Purdue, Purdue. So when when the supercontinents break apart, there there's 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 the Earth is experiencing you know groaning and birth pangs, and so to me that's what birth, that's what Pinocha represented, going into Sing for the Day where you have this it's, it's this big ending. So what I hope that people get out of this is that they have they they have their own sense of story. Um, I have my story with this album. I hope that they get a sense of their own story in this album. Um, and so, like, as you mentioned in, in Monticello, there's a song about gaslighting. So, you know, I'd be interested to figure out if they're able to figure out which one that is. You know, uh, there's a song on there that was actually the lyrics were written by my cousin John. It was a song that he gave me um, and said, hey, if you think that you can put a song to this, go ahead and try it. And it became one of my favorites. Um, and it's a conversation that it, the, the whole thing is a, a conversation that he has with his daughter. Mm. Um and so it's like but people will assign their own meanings to these songs and so that's wh what i'm anxious to hear are what people hear what's what's your response what are the what are the things that you're getting out of this album um in many cases that's what i that's what i do get out of this album is that is is hearing other interpretations of 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 my songs from people um and uh, I got out of it the satisfaction of saying that I, I created an album. It was, you know, initially a bucket list item. I didn't know if it was going to become something that, you know, that honestly, even the quality, I didn't even know if the quality was going to be what it was at the end of it. Um, I just knew that this was something that I, that I wanted to do, that I was feeling that I was being led to do. Uh, um, and, oh, geez, again. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm noticing the, the Wi-Fi meter. Um, someone's siphoning Wi-Fi over there in the kitchen. Someone's um, crowded. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's 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 what I got out of it. That's what I hope people get out of it. I hope they enjoy the music. It was honestly some of the most fun, some of the most creative times that I've had putting this thing together. And I do look forward to making a, a second one. I look forward to to, to doing these releases um, and giving a people kind of a sneak peek of at, at who I am, um, especially for those who do know me, who may not know this side of me. Um, and there are probably a lot of people who who are in that in that wagon. So there's probably a lot of people who are surprised by just how darn handsome you are. I tell people I have a face for radio. So, you know, there we go. My wife, it, my wife loves me. That's all that matters. It's all that matters. All, that matters. all right, brother. So we have the socials on the screen. Yeah. Um, if people go to joshgillespie.com, they get your newsletter. Yep. They'll get my newsletter. They'll also get a free download of maybe it's time. Uh, follow me. This is the most important thing that I've been find, that I'm finding out. Follow me, please, on Spotify. Um, listen to the oh. songs on, you know, you can listen to it everywhere. YouTube, Google. Well, that's essentially, that's the same thing now, but, uh, Apple music, you can download it from iTunes, uh, Spotify big time there. Uh, but again, you can also download it for free from my website. You can download it for free from Bandcamp, uh, or name your price at, on my website or on Bandcamp. Um, but I, you know, and, and share it with your friends. If you would love the song, please share it um it was a it was a work of joy on my part and uh i really enjoyed making this and i hope that you enjoy the music too and if you do please share with your friends sharing is caring sharing is caring um 
I'd actually ask if I could play one more song just to kind of close everything out. Nope. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I promise I have this one down. Yes, please do. Okay. I'm, I'll play, I'll use this as a way to play us out. Um, and this is a song called Remains of Time. Um, I know, Jacob, you were probably hoping for souvenirs. Um, I can listen to that anytime. You can listen to it and you'll get a good version of it. Um, but I, I do enjoy, I play, I enjoy playing both songs, but I especially enjoy playing this one. And it seems like a good one to, to kind of close the show. Well, before you, before you send us off, just thanks for coming on. Thanks for earning your money. Thank you, sir. I do feel like I've earned every dime. We, we, we got our money's worth this tonight for sure. And, uh, Friday night. No, but in all seriousness, man, I'm proud of you. I love this record. Um, I've been playing it almost constantly. I've got like half the song stuck in my head. Uh, See, here, here's where I know if I'm winning if is if Isaiah listens to it and he likes it and starts telling his friends. We'll work on that. <laughs> All right, brother, take us out. We'll see everybody next week. You ask me what time is made of Shook my head and I don't know Science may for the answer No way to make
Thank you very much for having me.